How's it going everyone? My name is Mulder and welcome back to the GameCron. Today I have a special video for you because we're going to be looking at the 5 most surprising games of 2020. 2020 was a very interesting year for all of us, but luckily these 5 games, at least in my opinion, truly brought something special to the table that I wasn't expecting. But let's take a look at those 5 games right now. If you enjoy this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for a lot more. Also keep in mind that these 5 games I'm going to be talking about are games I specifically covered for the channel as well. If any of these games pique your interest, definitely check out the channel and watch a few playlist videos to see if this game is right for you. Let's kick things off with number 5, which is Maneater. Now Maneater is an open world game where you play as a baby tiger shark to get revenge for the death of your mom at the hands of Scaly Pete. Scaly Pete being a Cajun shark hunter, which will be the main focus of your entire campaign. But while you're on the road of revenge, you can travel around this open world eating other types of fish and humans, doing interesting types of challenges, but also evolving your shark. The RPG elements of this game allows you to add different types of upgrades to your shark to increase his attack strength, while also adding certain types of elemental attacks. Not to mention the fact that there'll be different types of bosses you can fight in this game, from human hunters to even other types of fish predators. The amount of mayhem that you can cause both underwater and on land as this giant evolved shark was just sheer joy. It really kind of reminded me of those risk-taking games that came out during the PlayStation 2 and the original Xbox era where developers had more creative freedom. Topping that off by exploring some very interesting places in this game such as the bayou, the open ocean where you can find ruins in the bottom of the sea, to even jumping into a sea world area where you can fight a giant orca. Just the sheer randomness of things that can happen to you and the mayhem that you can cause along with a pretty fun story really pulled me into Maneater. So if you're a fan of the original Jaws Unleashed game that came out many years ago, if you're looking for a game that kind of breaks the norm of what we're used to, Battle Royale or Call of Duty games, Maneater is definitely the game to give a try. I mean, who wouldn't want to play as a hungry shark eating defenseless humans? Number 4, Pathfinder Kingmaker Definitive Edition. Now this is the Pathfinder Kingmaker game that became available to console players. The PC version did come out a couple years ago, but what's great about this particular version of the game is that it comes with all the added DLC into it. Pathfinder Kingmaker is a role-playing game that is actually based off of the Pathfinder franchise, which is very similar to Dungeons & Dragons. The game allows you to pick between multiple different races and you start off in a place called the Stolen Lands, which is part of the greater region of River Kingdoms. How everything starts is that after a crazy battle within a castle, you are then rewarded control of your very own lands. But in order to get control of these lands, you're going to have to kick out all the barbarians and supernatural creatures that haunt your land. Along this journey, you're going to meet an interesting cast of characters that you could actually have join your party. And just like in any classic RPG fashion, you can upgrade these characters and equip them with types of gear that you see fit for your party. You can actually dive into the side stories of these characters if you wish by doing certain types of side missions to where you'll gain more of their trust, or if you find them useless in your party, you can kick them out. Everything you do in this game, just like in the Pathfinder franchise, has a pro and a con to it. But I definitely say the most fun I've had with this game is running your own kingdom. Once you've established enough funds and resources, you can start assigning certain characters to diplomatic positions. Not to mention the fact that you can decide what type of buildings you can build in different settlements across your kingdom. Bear in mind, as the days pass in your game, every single settlement can come under attack or your people can revolt depending upon their morale. The sheer randomness of things that can happen in this game while also exploring and dungeon crawling really captured me about this game. I have to say, it's been many years since I dived into a top-down RPG game before, but the deep character customization, the interesting story, the wonderful cast of characters really captured me in Pathfinder Kingmaker. So whether you're a fan of Pathfinder, the franchise in general, you've been itching for a new RPG to play, and you got plenty of time to spare, this is definitely a game for you. Next up is number three, which is Star Wars Squadrons. So I have to say that after EA got the Star Wars license, aside from Jedi Fallen Order, there haven't been a whole lot of Star Wars games produced by EA that I truly enjoyed. But I have to say that Star Wars Squadrons was such a surprise for me and easily became one of my favorite Star Wars games that EA has released in a very long time. Star Wars Squadrons takes place shortly after the Battle of Endor, with the Rebel Alliance gaining victory against the Empire, which then forces the Empire to go into guerrilla tactics. What's really fun about this game is that you can actually see the perspective from both sides. You'll be playing as two different pilots, one for the Empire and one for the Rebels. You'll be able to get to know each one of your co-pilots as you continue on in the game to get a better idea of where they stand with the whole war. It opens up some interesting dialogue between all these characters, and I have to honestly say, I actually found the Empire pilots a lot more intriguing to get to know than that of the Rebels. But the true joy about this game is the multiplayer. In multiplayer, you can fly around in four different types of starships for each side. Actually five now since EA just dropped some DLC not too long ago, with each side getting a brand new starfighter. These starfighters can 
action range from the classic X-Wing to the TIE Fighter to the Y-Wing, the TIE Bomber, and even other types of Starfighter ships that we actually haven't flown before, such as the TIE Reaper. But the other great thing about this is that every single fighter is customizable. As you play further into multiplayer, you'll be unlocking certain types of credits to where you can buy some new upgrades for your Starfighter. It opens up a variety of different builds that you can add to your fighter, such as what type of guns you have on board your ship, the different type of engines you can attach to your Starfighter, shields, armor, you name it. But the other great thing about this game is the VR support. If you have an Oculus headset or any other type of VR headset, you're gonna have a blast sitting into your own cockpit of either your TIE Fighter or X-Wing and just looking at all the controls but getting a true feel of flying around in space. So if you're a fan of the original Star Wars TIE Fighter or a flight sim nut but also a Star Wars fan, you owe it to yourself to at least give Star Wars Squadrons a try. This is truly a great Star Wars Starfighter game that I had a blast playing with my friends but also had a great time playing the campaign. So definitely give it a shot if you're a fan of the franchise. Number 2, Gears Tactics. Gears Tactics, which came out last year on the PC but also recently on the Xbox, truly captures the feel of the Gears franchise in a turn-based system. Being a huge fan of the Gears franchise, but also turn-based games like XCOM, both of these worlds blend well together. The game takes place one year after Emergence Day. The Locust Horde is everywhere on the planet Sarah, while the Gears cause tries to hold them off as best they can. Your ragtag squad of Gears soldiers are sent on a suicide mission to try to stop the Locust lead scientists from continuing to create abominations for the Locust Horde. Along your journey, you meet other Gears, but also civilians who are trying to help you out and fight against the Locust Horde. The story itself isn't bad, and for Gears fans, you're actually going to find a lot to like here. You can customize your characters any way you see fit, from the type of weapons they're running in with, along with their armor, and even the design of their armor. Each character has their own particular type of skill tree to where you can upgrade them depending upon what type of playstyle you're going for. Want to be more reserved and have your soldiers take out enemies from a distance, you can do that. If you want them to go in chainsaws ready and guns blazing, you can also do that as well. The amount of freedom you have to upgrade and customize your Gears characters is great. You have to think on your toes and be creative sometimes in certain battles, especially against bosses. So whether you're a fan of turn-based games or the Gears franchise, give Gears Tactics a try. This game was definitely a surprise for me and I think it will be for you as well. And then finally, number one, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Now I know the Assassin's Creed franchise is a huge franchise, but I have to honestly say, for me, I actually dropped off the Assassin's Creed train shortly after Desmond bit the dust. The last Assassin's Creed game I tried to dive into was Assassin's Creed Syndicate, which really kind of lost it for me. So after taking a break from the franchise, I decided to give Assassin's Creed Valhalla a try. And I have to honestly say, I cannot remember the last time I truly truly enjoyed an Assassin's Creed game since maybe Assassin's Creed Black Flag or Assassin's Creed 2. In Assassin's Creed Valhalla, you play as Eivor, who's one of the leaders of the Raven Clan. After a few things go sour in your native homeland of Norway, you and your clan set forth to England, which from the very moment you land on English soil, you'll meet a wide variety of different types of characters, a wide variety of different types of missions and challenges to complete, such as assassination missions or taking down powerful zealots, a story of intrigue and power that can actually lead you down the path to Valhalla itself. But I have to honestly say, one of the biggest surprises for me that I truly enjoyed about this game was settlement building. When you land in England, you'll be able to build a settlement for you and your Raven clan to call home. But in order to to build this settlement, you need to go on raiding parties to where you can customize your soldiers to go raiding with you. The thing that really grabbed me about Assassin's Creed Valhalla is how immersed I was in its world. I definitely got the Witcher 3 vibe the more I played into this game. From the landscape, to the very good combat system, to the customization options not only for my own character and the different type of armor sets you could unlock in the game, but how you can even customize your raiding party was all great. The story itself is pretty out there, but if you're a fan of the Assassin's Creed franchise and you want to enjoy something unique and special, Assassin's Assassin's Creed Valhalla will definitely deliver. But hey, don't just take my word for it, definitely check out the playlist videos I did on Assassin's Creed Valhalla and the other four games I talked about in this video. And make the call for yourself to see if any one of these games is right for you. If there was a game that came out in 2020 that I didn't cover here that truly surprised you, definitely drop a comment below. And that's it for our five most surprising games of 2020. Each one of these games was truly special to me and I hope you find them special for yourself as well if you haven't played any of them yet. If you found this video fun, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for a lot more. As we say goodbye to these games of 2020 and we start kicking things off into the new year, the next game we're going to be covering is Werewolf the Apocalypse Earthblood, which I recently dropped a preview and thoughts video on this game last week. Which if you're a fan of werewolves, definitely give that video a look. That game will be dropping February 4th and when it does, I'll be doing a slew of content videos just on that game, along with other RPGs that are coming out later this year. So definitely subscribe and click the little bell icon to be notified of new content the moment it drops. I cannot wait to dive into Werewolf the Apocalypse Earthblood with you along with new RPGs coming soon, but until then, my name is Mulder and thank you so much for joining me in the Game Cron.